Welcome to Firm Foundation. In these times of shifting standards and faulty foundations, there is a solid place on which to build a victorious life. And that place is the Firm Foundation of Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Your host for Firm Foundation is Brian Hudson, a Bible teacher, pastor, author, and producer of Life Enriching Media. It's a fitting day to recognize God's goodness. You can be seated. It's fitting as, as we, we're at the beginning. We're beginning of an, a, new, a new year to recognize that God is in control, that God is sovereign, and he's not holding anything back from us. As I was um, studying and thinking about and praying about um, what to say on today, I know what God is saying to me, and I thought, well, you know, I prayed about it and I got released. So maybe, maybe God is saying this to, to you. And when I think about um, this new year coming, there's one thing that, that stayed in my mind, and it's extend your hands. The Lord was saying to me, extend your hands. Now, if you've ever been to a performance, I like to go to plays and musicals and stuff. And if it's been, well, it doesn't matter if it wasn't a good performance, but when the performance is over, when, when all is said and done, and there's a final call, and the, the, uh, they raise the curtain, and the, uh, the actors come out, and they introduce them, and you know, everybody stands and they applaud, they applaud. But at some point, when you're applauding the person, they extend their hands, right? They extend their hands to the orchestra. Because if it hadn't been for the orchestra, then the play wouldn't have been, or the musical wouldn't have been what it could have been. They extend their hands to the, to the producer. They extend their hands to the director, because why? They knew that it, it wasn't because they did everything, but they had some help. So God says, extend your hands. There's a scripture uh, reference, and it is, um, let's see, Matthew, Matthew 10 and 8. I'm going to do two versions. It's, NIV says this. Jesus is talking to, to his disciples. says, just as you have received the gracious favor of God, now let God use you to show his grace to others. I really like the message version. It says, don't begin by traveling to some far off place to convert unbelievers. And don't try to be dramatic by talking some, talking, uh, some public enemy to some public enemy. Go to the lost, confused people right here in the neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here. Bring health to the sick, raise the dead, touch the untouchables, kick out the demons. You have, you have been treated generously, so live generously. That's what God says to me, and I, I, highlighted, I highlighted some stuff, and you might not have the message Bible um, on you, and those are that you, you have your uh, devices. Uh, go to the message Bible, and, and it says there are certain things that, as I read it, 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 it spoke to me, and it, it says go. Real simple, right? The Lord wants us to go. He wants us to go. He wants us to tell people. He wants us to, to, to convert unbelievers. That's evangelism. He wants us to go. And it's just that simple. And then he tells us who we're going to. We're going to the unbelievers. And it's, it doesn't have to be dramatic, right? He's saying right where you are, right in your neighborhood. See, what we're talking about here is not something new. You know, people make uh, New Year's resolutions on things that they're gonna lose weight or they're gonna work out. But God is saying the same thing that he told the disciples all those 
thousands years ago, he says, go. And he's telling us the same thing. He's saying, go, go to the lost, go to the confused people right here. It's a lot of confused people up and down Keystone. He says, go, go in the neighborhood. He wants us to influence the people that we're around, where we live, where we have church, where we go to the grocery store. He wants us to influence those people, to tell them. And it also says, um, tell them that the kingdom is here. And then it says, bring health to the sick. Guess what? We have healing in our hands. He says, bring. Why would he tell us to bring healing to the sick if we did not have healing in our hands? We're not waiting to be healed, but we have to release the healing. He's already given us health. We've, we've, got, we've got to um, do the things necessary to walk in that health, and then we can heal others, right? He's given us that power. It's not by any power of our own, but it's the power that worketh within us. He's telling us the same thing he told them. He says, raise the dead. Then he said, touch the untouchables. Now, what in the world? Touch the untouchables. You guys know I work in a hospital, and I've seen some things. There's some things you don't want to touch. And they could be dying things, but it just looks so bad. You know, you just don't want to touch it. But what happens is when you when you work in that kind of situation, you want to save a life. Huh? If you want to save a life, then you touch the untouchable. So if somebody comes in here and they smell, you still greet them. If somebody is behind you in the store, and maybe they're talking out of their head a little bit, but what, you still show them love. The untouchable, seemingly the unlovable, we have to do what Jesus did. This is what the Lord said to me. I'm not saying this to you. I'm saying this to me. I'm saying this to us. It's so easy to go about our day and do the things the same way that we've always done and to not see people and to not recognize the need that other people have but when we love God just like pastor said our our motto is loving God loving people if you don't see them how can you love them you got to see them if you don't see them how can you love them so I asked the Lord Lord help me Help me to open my eyes to not just go around doing what I need to do for the day, but help me to be a blessing. Help me to love my neighbor. He says, kick out the demons. And we know that all these things that go on, it's, it's not about, it's, it's a spirit. You know, uh, people are doing things and, and, and in the world and stuff and you don't want to be bothered with them or you know there are people that always cause confusion it might even be in your family so you don't want to have anything to do with them and you close the door on them but it's a spirit and so it doesn't always have to be that way because we can pray and God can move and he can change a heart so they may have a hard heart, but, but it's not, their hard heart isn't too hard for God to get through. And I'm going to say one more thing, and then I'm going to sit down. And I know that this, is a, this may be a solemn word. I don't know, but I think it's good. I think it's good because that's what the Lord will have us to do. It's, he says, you have been treated generously. We just sang a song. You, Lord, you've been good. You've been better than good. What is that generosity? So many doors he's opened. I, some people, you had a job that you didn't even qualify for, you don't even have a degree for, but you've got a job. God's met your needs. 
I don't know about you. I've been at a point where I didn't have a job and I went on a vacation. How do you go on a vacation and you're in between jobs? Why? Because God is good and he's been generous. He's been generous. So then the call is what? Then, then to, to all of us who much is given, much is required, right? Then I have to be generous. So the prayer is, Lord, you know, some people, some people are just generous by nature. You know, I'm not that person. I think I'm generous, but I make an effort to be generous, right? I like gifts. That's my love language. I love getting gifts. I also love giving gifts because I know how that makes me feel. People don't really, uh, they may not remember what you say to them, but it's how you make them feel. So when you go about your day, uh, try to make people feel love. Because God loves them and, 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 and we're made in his image and in his likeness. And if that's why we're here to build the kingdom and, and, and Jesus love shines through us and, and we can't be too busy. We can't be too preoccupied. We can't be so uh, distracted by what, what's going on in our lives that we forget what the main thing is. What is the main thing? The main thing is to do what God calls us to do. Hallelujah. He wants us to convert believers. Right. He wants us to go to the lost and confused and tell them that the kingdom is here. He says, go right in your neighborhood. Bring health to the sick and raise the dead. Touch the untouchables. Kick out the demons. And just know that you can, you are generous because he has treated you with such generosity. I want to thank pastor for the opportunity to have a few words. Um, and I just want to thank God because sometimes when, um, when, when pastor asks us to speak and sometimes he gives us directives and sometimes he doesn't, but most times he does. And I don't know that always sends me up into a frenzy because I'm saying, what will I say? But you know what I did? I said, God, I don't have anything to say. You give me what to say. And I'm going to say that. So I want to thank the Lord. I want to thank pastor for the opportunity. And I don't know about you for the, uh, on, for the incoming year and for the rest of our lives, I want to be about the business of doing what God calls us to do. Amen. Hallelujah. There we go. Amen. When she was, uh, when Minister Sean was speaking, she said, extend your hand. And I'm thinking, indiscriminately extend your hand. Don't discriminate who you extend your hand to. Indiscriminately extend your hand. Amen. Amen. Uh, God has poured so much into us. And he's poured so much into us. So that we can allow ourselves to be poured out. Yeah, right. Amen. He didn't just he didn't just put himself into you just for you to retain what he's given you. He poured into you so you can pour yourself out. And the thing about it is, the blessing of it is, all you gotta do is just be you. Just be you. Just be you, quirky, peculiar, weird. Just be you. Just be, just be you, you know, and then you don't, then you don't have to work up anything else other than he said, be an imitator of him. We imitate him, but still be you, be you. That's a, that's enough. That's enough. Just be you. 
right now we're 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 on the precipice. We're looking over into into uh, the new year, and God has blessed us. And in the song, thank you, Lord, for blessing me. I thank God He's blessed you, but I really thank Him for blessing me. Amen. And I do. I want to see y'all be blessed. I absolutely do. But I thank God for blessing me. Think about this. You know, when we were younger, you were younger and just thinking about time and and New Year's, it's just another day. Absolutely it is. But it matters. It matters to us because it's a line. It's like it's a line. And we're crossing over into a into a new into a new year. But when you we was young, you couldn't wait till you turn 15 or 16 years old so you can get your license. Hey Amen. It was just things you couldn't wait till you was 18. If you was a certain, had a certain mindset, you couldn't wait till you was 21 so you can get in that bar. <laughs> but now we older, we, we, yeah, just being real, y'all. We older, and now we like, man, this time is just going so fast. I want things, I want it to slow down. And I remember when I f first got my job, I used to say, especially if it was payday Friday, man, I wish it was Friday. And one of my older coworkers, he said, stop wishing for it to be Friday. You gonna wish your life away. And I never forgot that. Stop wishing for tomorrow, enjoy today. And enjoy today. So I know most of us in here, not all, but most of us, we got more behind us than in front of us. So I come to the conclusion, you know, and, and every now and then we can get in a, a spurt and we can do some amazing things like we used to when we was young. But then afterwards, you got to go somewhere and sit down or lay down. Come on. Take a nap. One of them power naps. If y'all ride around the city and y'all go in the back and look in the back of shopping centers, y'all might see me in the back of the shopping center in my truck taking a five-minute power nap. But I've come, and this is what I wanted to say, I've come to this place in my life where I can't do everything that I used to do, but what I do, what I do and what I'm able to do, I want to be effective. I want to be, I want to be effective. And what I'm, what I can do, and what I'm able to do, Amen. So let that be with you. That whatever we we don't we can't do everything. We can't do everything. But what you are able to do, ask the Lord to cause you to be effective in it. Amen. Amen. And I think that's I think that's admirable. Just be just be effective in what it is that you can do. You know, and 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 the Lord will be pleased with us. You know, we can't we ain't got the energy that we used to and that's okay amen be effective minister bertha amen. amen loving god loving people serving the world we the people of god must stay on course and continue to show our love for the Lord and for people. The time we spend, the efforts we make, and the resources we share are making a difference in the lives of people. Our family, our friends, our neighbors, fellow workers on the job, and even strangers that we encounter. People are being encouraged, strengthened, even inspired to live their lives with purpose and passion for the Lord and people. Even in these difficult days, we must look for and take hold of the opportunity to show the love of God to people to help and encourage people in their times of need, whether the need is physical, mental, or spiritual. We are now living in the times expressed in 2 Timothy chapter 3. 
in the last days, there will be very difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing. That means open lack of respect, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Even so, <laughs> we must embrace, we must welcome, we must take in, we must take up gladly the opportunity to do good. Ephesians 5 says, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. In the book of Jude, he says, but you, beloved, I'm talking to the beloved of God right now, but you, beloved, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ predicted. They told you that in the last time there would be scoffers, open lack of respect, whose purpose in life is to satisfy their ungodly desires. They follow their natural instincts because they do not have God's spirit in them. But you, beloved, must build each other up in your most holy faith, pray, in the power of the Holy Spirit and await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ who will bring you to eternal life. In this way, you will keep yourself safe in God's love. First John chapter four reminds us, God is love. He is the source of love. Romans five tells us, we know how dearly God loves us. Don't you know it? <laughs> because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. That's why we love. 1 John 4 reminds us, there is no fear in love. No fear means there is no expectation of harm, injury, or loss. His perfect love casts out fear. We have boldness. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Boldness means we have a fearless and daring spirit. Because, he goes on to say, as he is, so are we in this world. We love him because he first loved us. When Jesus was asked what was the most important commandment, he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. When Jesus told the parable of the Good Samaritan, he gave examples of how people ignored someone who needed help desperately. And then he asked, which one of these people was really the neighbor of the person who needed help? And, and Jesus said to him, to the person who asked, the one who showed him mercy. <laughs> so Jesus said, go and do the same. <laughs> do likewise. So I just urge you today as we enter this new year, let us keep on going and keep on showing the love of God and the compassion that he provides. We are part, we are this part of God's plan to reveal his love to people and for people and to show the compassion 
and the love of God. I encourage you, go and do the same. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, when he visited Minister Sean, he, he stopped by and ministered me and, and, and visited me too. Thank you. Because <laughs> I, I learned a long time ago, if the Lord don't give it to me, I've got nothing to give. <laughs> I learned that a long time ago. <laughs> amen, amen. Oh, thank the Lord. Right now, we're going to be blessed by our other ministers who will come forward to share with us what the Lord has laid on their hearts. First, we will have Minister Corey Jones, followed by Chaplain Dolores Epps, and then Elder Galen Owens, and they will come in that order. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Praise God. Can we uh, just thank God for what he did in 2023 before we go into 2024? Praise God. Praise God. Amen. And uh, can we just uh, bless the Lord for our leaders, our shepherds, Dr. Hudson and Lady Hudson, for shepherding us and leading us. We've done some truly remarkable things this year. Amen. And uh, I'm so excited about the opportunity just to share a couple words, uh, what the Lord has laid on my heart. And uh, it's, it's interesting how the Holy Spirit works, because anytime we're allotted an opportunity to do this, all the ministers and the elders have pieces of, of the same message, the same words. So I thank God for that. He's a he's a very present help. Um, I just want to direct your attention to uh, a piece of uh, scripture. First uh, Thessalonians chapter five and just one verse, just one verse, the 24th verse. It reads the New King James Version. It reads faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Just briefly, I want to give you a, a, a brief context to what was going on. Paul had received uh, some information about the what was going on in the, the church of Thessalonica. And basically, they had a lot of questions about the day of the Lord. And uh, will it be like, you know, a king come in and, you know, kill all our enemies? Or what should we do? How should we prepare? And I like this word because... God is faithful, and when that day does come, he will find me in New Covenant Church loving God, loving people, and serving the world. I don't know when the day of the Lord is coming. I don't know when he will return, but I'll be busy. I'll be blessed in getting busy, doing what we, what we need to be doing. Loving God, loving people, and serving the world. As we enter into this new year, we should be encouraged by the fact that our, our Lord, Jesus Christ, is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Now, while we do not know exactly what the year holds, we know that we serve a good God. We can rest assured that since he does not change, we will not be consumed. We serve a God who will keep you on your good days your bad days, the rainy days, and the sunny days. How can you not serve a God who will watch over all your days? Who will keep you as long as you want to be kept. Another passage of scripture, 1 John 4 and 16, it says, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us known and believed 
That's, that's, that's past tense. So if you know, you know. You know that God kept you in 2023. The, but depending on your age, that will tell you how many other years he has kept you. How many other years he has sustained you. How many other years he has been with you. That's just add to it. The further we get away from those times, you know, it, 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 become, it goes to the back of our, remember, our memory. But let's not forget how God has kept us and sustained us, not just in 2023, but he has kept us all of our days. The verse continues to say, God is love and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. God's love is on a whole different level. It's on a whole different level. It should be our goal to love like God. We love God because he first loved us. But in 2024, my prayer is that our ability to reciprocate his love in our lives multiplies. To love God is to feel a deep connection. While loving is an active expression. I looked into the word a little, a little, a little further and I found that uh, affection was at the... Uh, the, the Latin or at the root of, of, of loving. And then I looked up that definition and it said to impress. To impress. And what we do here, loving God, loving people and serving the world, the love that we show others impresses God's love upon them. I'm not talking about the type of impression of a, a, a soft foam mattress where you just press it in. It leaves a lasting impression. On people's heart, people who have been wounded, who have been hurt, who have uh, the world has been uh, cruel to them. In the wealth of God's abundance, 2024 presents the opportunity to go to new heights in our intimacy with the Lord. Let the flame of our fervor set ablaze in our communities, set ablaze in our workplaces in our families, in our youth, and in our schools. And God, let your love for you, God, let our love for you, oh God, permeate and set a precedence for your presence in every place that we dwell in 2024. Every place that we go, let us leave lasting impressions. Let us take this, this let me take this further, because Dr. Hudson said uh, to, to love God, uh, or to know God is different to accept him. He said the illustration where Jesus knocked on the door. He's like, oh, that's Jesus. And then he just closed the door. To know God is different to accept him and invite him in. We are encouraging people to invite him in. Oh, that's Jesus. Come on in. People love God when, when, when God does something for them. Oh, I love God. Then go right back to what they was doing. You can love God because he is good and he is right on time. But when you are loving God, you are acknowledging him in all of your ways in all of your habits, your decision making, your processing in all of your proclivities. Loving God stretches you. It molds you to the standard of God's love. You can say you love God, but how are you loving God? How do you do? How do you express it? Let's hear from Jesus in this portion of scripture, commonly known as the highly high priestly prayer. John 17 and verse 26, it says, and I have declared to them your name. Indeed, he sure did. This is Jesus. And he says, and will declare it that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. We love people naturally because we are social creatures. But as I mentioned, loving God is an act of expression. So as we walk into 2024, God will allow us to love past our natural abilities, our natural capacity. As God, add, as God adds his super to our natural, let our ability to empathize increase. Now, inevitably in 2024, I'm going to tell you now, some will make it difficult for us to love them effectively. Some people will make it difficult for us to love them actively. But in those moments, Lord, allow your strength to reach down and help us. And we thank you in advance for that, Lord. Loving people is not an option. Jesus on the cross 
bloody and beaten. Ask the Father to forgive them, for they know not what they do. Only the heart of God can help you pray for a hater. And as we are loving people, let our expressions be frequent reminders to others that they are sons and daughters, children of God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So let us look forward to serving the world. Let us serve knowing that only what we do for Christ will last. Not only that, but we're leaving lasting impressions amongst this community and those who are recipients of our service. From our support and prayers with GFE to our community outreach within the city, with inReach, with the Health and Wellness Hub, it is evident that as long as, as long as we are willing to be used by God, he will continue to give us innovative approaches and methods, and most importantly, the strength to serve the world. New Covenant Church is an impactful church. And I personally look forward to uh, continuing to, uh, to serve and, and make a difference as an educator, as a God-fearing educator. Because I know that my God can save a generation. And I just want to show you a couple pictures from the Youth Social Emotional Learning Club something that God put on my heart to do. And when I say, when God puts something on your heart, an idea, it's important that you pray about it and see it through. Um, my goal was to teach these young men. Um, I received a grant from IPS. I purchased them blazers so they can dress, dress up on Tie Tuesday and feel confident about themselves and what they're doing in the classroom. I said, God, I wanna give them some haircuts. They got. You know, they, they need some haircuts, some lineups or something. I know they want to grow it out. That's fine. But I want them to feel like something. I want them to know that they are of value. And so the first time I did it out of pocket, I said, it's okay, God. Like, you know, I'm trying to find it, find the resources and the funding for it. And here's the message. When uh, God puts stuff on your heart, you don't always know how it's going to be done. But when people see you serving and people see you doing things, they'll recognize that that's the spirit of the Lord and they'll want to join in and help. So to God be the glory, because in one week after meeting with these young men or, or meeting over the first two quarters, in one week I got two good messages. One was that the Pacers wanted to do a partnership and one of the Pacers wanted to come and talk to the boys and pour into them. The second one was, Corey, Mr. Jones, we're going to go ahead and pay the stipend so you can get them boys haircuts every month. I said, look at God. Look at God. So what God has for you to do is for you to do, but he's going to send some divine provision. He's going to help you love God, loving God, loving people, and serving the world. God will do it. He is faithful. In this coming year, I admonish you to consider how will you live out loving God, loving people, and serving the world? How will you go higher in what God has called you to do? I trust that as vessels, you will allow God to have his way. And I look forward to, the minist to, the, to this ministry's greater works. Praise God. Morning, church. Oh, let me see if I can get my glasses on. Okay. I can agree with everything that the Lord has given these ministers this morning. Praise the Lord. And as I was preparing for this message, um, reflections on loving God, loving people, and serving the world in 2024, I looked up the definition of reflections. And it says giving careful thought, serious consideration, not just thinking about it, but it should move us to action. 
So for 2024, I've come to this conclusion. This is not only New Covenant's mission statement or motto, it is our individual mission, our individual motto. And it is also God's command. In Matthew 22 and 37, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. It doesn't change just because we go into a new year, okay? 2024 is just like a new day. And it's been said, uh, every day is a day for us to love the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind and all of our strength. We are allowed to enter into a new day. It's another opportunity to live God's purpose for each one of us. It's another chance for the believer, the Christ follower, to model what Jesus taught and how we live our lives. John 14 and 15 states, if you love me, keep my commands. As we continue to grow in our knowledge, in our relationship, with the Lord, it also brings about responsibility. We cannot hear, sincerely hear what God is saying without becoming a doer of his word. The second command, a part of the greatest commandment God gave us is equally important. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. Hence, the second part of our mission statement. As we allow God to have complete control, that means I give up my will and I take his will. I operate in God's will. And it's a surrender that we have to do on a daily basis, okay? There's no way that we can grow. There's no way that we will know what God's purpose is for us if it's a hit and miss, <laughs> okay? I'm spending time with him today and, and days go by before I come again into that place where I'm getting fed, okay? I need to feed my spirit on a daily basis. And it will, it will, uh, I will exchange my life for his perfect life in me as I live out my days. We will begin to operate from his perspective, experience a new attitude, new behavior, you know, just a new way of thinking and a new way of doing. As we grow in the love and love with our uh, ourselves, because this tells us, love your neighbor as yourself. It's hard to love somebody else if you don't love you. So, so as we grow in in Christ, He teaches us how to love us. And as he teach us how to love ourselves, then we know how to give that love to our neighbor. Loving our neighbor hinges on the ability to love ourselves. If we don't know how to love ourselves, like I said, it would be impossible for us to love others. The third part of our mission statement, serving the world. In Luke 22 and 27, Jesus stated, Who is more important, the one who sits at the table 
or the one who serves? Now, the world says the one who sits at the table, of course. But that's not here. That's not for us. For I am among you as a server. This is what he says. And we want to model. We have to model. And if we're loving the Lord, uh, we can't help but model it. That's just part of loving him. So as we, as we, um, as we come to that place of service, okay, again, in Mark 10 and, and 45, the Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve. The deeper our relationship with the Lord, the more open our hearts to be servants. Uh, or maybe I should say the more sincere we are about our relationship with Christ. Service is just what we do. It's just what we do. 2024 will bring new opportunities for us as followers of Christ. It will also close some doors. Some things won't be left behind in 2024. Some of the situations and, and circumstances, they're going to flow from 23 over into 24. You know, uh, there'll be some unresolved challenges, and there's going to be all those blessings that we have um, uh, enjoyed in 2024. But the one truth we can expect is that God is the same. He remains the same. Hebrew 13 and 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So 2024 is going to offer a new beginning to possibilities and an end to some opportunities. But as Christ followers, our only choice is to continue moving forward. Pastor has given us so many messages in 2023 about moving forward. And it's the only way that we're going to continue to put on Christ and to grow out of us. It's going to be the only way. I know I have seven minutes, but I might not have seven minutes. <laughs> okay, I just have to say it simple, okay? But I'd like to, I'd like to leave you with a couple of things. And one is, as I was, I was preparing for this, um, a commentary by uh, Matthew Henry uh, on uh, the scripture, John 13, uh, verses 4 to 6. And it is when Christ was having the last supper with his disciples. And he, after supper, supper, he took, girded himself with the cloth and washed his disciples' feet. That's our greatest, most, um, I, I think our greatest example of what it means to serve. And so this is what, um, Matthew Henry says, he said he put himself into the garb of a servant to do it. He laid aside his loose and upper garments so that he might apply himself to this service the more expediently. We must address ourselves to duty as those that are resolved not to take state, but to take pains. We must divest ourselves of everything that would either feed our pride or hang in our way and hinder us in what we have to do. We must gird up the loins of our mind as those that in earnest buckle to the business. He did it with all the humble ceremony that could be, went through all parts of the service distinctly and passed by none of them. He did it as if he had been used thus to service. And we're supposed to do the same. Give our all. As we enter into 2024, our mission is the same. Our purpose might take on 
different platforms, but our purpose is the same, to love God, to love people, and to serve the world. And I encourage, I'm encouraging myself and I'm encouraging you to do it out of a heart of gratitude and to know that it's the love of God that sets us free. If we do everything out of the love of God, because He is God, we will see amazing changes, not only in ourselves, but also in those that the Lord has placed in our lives, in our sphere of influence. And I just thank the Lord for the opportunity that he continues to avail all of us to be the light, to be the salt, to be the witness of the greatest gift, the greatest love any of us could ever, ever know. Amen. Amen. Time is a gift, y'all. Did you hear me? Time is a gift. I'm not going to be up here long because they done already took all the good stuff to say. So, <laughs> uh, My wife says this about uh, Minister Coy. She's like, he's so hype. I'm like, <laughs> he's young. That's right. He's young. He's young. He's young. Amen. Amen. And that's, a, and, and that's a blessing. Amen. It's truly a blessing. Y'all, don't blame this on me. Y'all put this on God because this is just how he deals with me. But I'm just thinking, I'm coming up here and I'm last. And I'm thinking about the fumes coming through the, through the door. And I'm seeing y'all. And, and I'm up here. And just like on the cartoons, the fumes is just like floating y'all out the room while I'm up here. Don't blame me. That's how God deals with me. So, but uh, it is. It it uh, God is. He's He's an awesome God, and I'm so looking forward to the new year, beloved. I like that word because it it mean it it says the one whom I love, but also the one whom loves me, yeah. beloved. Philippians 4, verse 6, Beloved, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace, and the peace, and the peace, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Verse 13, I can do all things. I can do all, all, all. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Minister Corey he commented, and he said there, the way there's a flow of the Spirit of God when he, especially you see it even more readily when, when we come one by one. You get to see that. Everybody got a little peace, you know. And and what I what I just want to share my heart, and what what the Lord gave me is pretty much just what I have observed, and what I've observed is this here. This year in particular, we have had an opportunity to to be poured into through seminars and things of that nature, and and more readily so to the people of our generation, our generation, but. Not just that, but but I can see we're still pouring into the generation coming up. Minister Corey, I see the I see the growth in you because Pastor is pouring into you. I see it. And you already accomplished when you got here, but you you are growing up. Because we we are not just 
taking what we, we get for us, but we're also raising up the ones coming behind us. Amen. Most of us, we're older. We don't raise our children, but, but Sister Pat, she's still ministering to the children. We're, 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 we're blessing and, and receiving things for our generation, but we're also pouring into those coming up, our children and those beneath them. So we're doing these things all at the same time. It's all going on simultaneously. So that's just an observation. So it's, it's a blessing, but I would like to think that our culture is such that we don't push our old people into a corner. We still bless and respect and esteem the older generation. That's what I see. And I'm not saying that other cultures don't do this, but I'm talking about us. That's what we do. Everybody, no matter where you are, if you're a child, if you're middle aged, if, you, if you're moving on up in years, you still got value. And I see this ministry, we're pouring, we're, we're, we're blessing our generation, we're getting information that we can use in retirement, all of that. I see that. And I thank God for that. But we're also pouring into those coming up. And that's what I see that we need to continue to do. Don't leave nobody behind. Don't leave anybody behind. And somebody say, can you do all of that? Yes, we can. Like Obama said, yes, we can. Yes, we can. So I'm just encouraged that the pastor has the forethought and the vision, and I don't even know if he's fully aware that he's doing that, but I see that. That's what's going on. We're being a blessing to our generation, but we're blessing the generations coming up behind us. And that's what I, that's what I so look forward to. That's what when I see Minister Corey get up here and he's hyped, I, I know we're we going to be in good hands. And I don't have to fret about, you know, I'm getting old, what am I going to do and whatever else, because I'm being given tools and things that I can use. So when, I, when that day comes, when I walk away from my job, I'm going to be prepared. Amen. So God is a good God, and he's able to do all these things in a simultaneous fashion. We can't, but he can. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens. Beloved, like Mother Hustle would say, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Amen. God bless you. And we got something to look forward to. And like I, I tell, I was telling Minister Bertha last week, when I look out and I see your faces, I see, I look, I look upon your countenance, I know, hear me, we are a blessed people. I see it in your face. We are a blessed people. Don't ever, you know, and, and I, we take it for granted. I see people, sometimes I look at them and they tell me they my age. I'm like, my God, what happened? I don't say that, but it may even show on my face. And if I can, black don't crack. If we take care of ourselves, we got other things we got to deal with, the police after us and whatever else. But, 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 you know, hey, we, we still look good. Even in handcuffs, we still look good. <laughs> <laughs> so we got something to look forward to God has blessed us and I believe that he's going to continue to do so winter has started every day gets a little bit longer you got to get to it to get through it so let's go on in and spring will be here before you know it God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Let's just stand up, give God some praise. Come on, bless the Lord. Stand up and Lord, thank you for your word today, for the insights on today, for the wisdom you shared today, Lord. Thank you. My wife's going to come up here in a moment. 
I want to just share some thoughts, and uh, I'm not preaching, I'm not exhorting, just want to share a couple of things. Uh, first slide is, is what we began the year 2023 with this, with this text. Psalm 65, verse 11. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths drip with abundance. And God has done exactly that. Hey, give God praise, sir. We have seen provision and faithfulness from God and help and strength. So many doors you've opened, so many ways you've made. And the thing about, about a year, uh, a new year and a year is going out, a year coming in, is God's not confined to working in a calendar year. It's not like now we're going into 24, you know, the goodness ends and the paths no longer drip with abundance. It's that continuation. That was just the focus for this year. And you've gained that this year and you won't lose it. You'll keep it. See, I'll keep it. All the blessings you've, uh, you've gained, you're going to keep them. And you add, God will add to it in this coming year. One verse that I've heard in my heart that I was praying about the new year. And by the way, what was shared on today, uh, I like to have the minister share on New Year's Eve so I, know what the, so I get some sense of what God is saying too. I'm listening to God through the people who he's placed in my life, amen, in ministry. And so when Sean talked about go and bring health and see people, and Bertha talked about build up each other, also said go and show. And Mr. Corey talked about how will you love God, love people, and serve the world. And Chaplain Epps talked about loving God and our neighbors and modeling Jesus example. Amen. And another word for go. Amen. Elder Owen's talking about pouring into others. So God is saying, go. Show. Pour into others. And that will be part of our vision for this coming year is to really focus on reaching people, discipling people, seeing people. You got to see people before you can help them. And, you know, it's possible to live your whole life mm -hmm. and not even see people. Yeah. You go from, you know, home to job, mm -hmm. unless your job is around a lot of different people. But if it's not, you can, you can live your whole part of your life, you only see the same people. Uh -huh. And never see other people as they are and where they are. So this scripture came up, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, New Living says, Be strong and immovable, always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Amen. New King James says, same verse, different rendition says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. And then I in my letter to the members and also on my Facebook page and blog, I've asked you to read Psalm 103. Please read that when you get a chance. It begins by saying, in fact, read with me, you can see the screen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Read now. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That's just part of it. Read the whole thing. And the last part here says, the Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. So when you watch the news and hear of things that disturb you and, and politicians talking crazy, don't get it twisted. God's throne is established. He rules over all. 
be concerned about what you see and do what you got to do and be a good citizen and vote and all that. But don't ever misunderstand who really is an authority. Amen. Amen. So God bless you, Mr. Wife, to come, please. And I want to just thank you as we have her share what's on her heart and uh, going to our brunch. By the way, everybody here is invited to the brunch. Amen. If you didn't get signed up in time, you're still invited. Amen. So go on back that way when it's time because we have enough. We plan on extra. All right. And Angel Bumpus always makes more. So, Pat, come share with us, please, on your heart. Amen. I'd like for us to all stand. We have been recipients yes. of the word on this morning. And this morning, and I was thinking this week about being recipients. Mm -hmm. And I think Minister, uh, Elder Owens taught maybe a few years ago about being a conduit. Mm -hmm. And so we have been recipients of God's love. We've been recipients of the word on this morning. And now we become conduits. We become the vessel that God uses to transfer that love to yeah. others. Yeah. And as I pray, I want you to recall God's faithfulness to you in 2023. And his faithfulness continues. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But I believe when we receive the word, then we respond to the word. So just for the next few moments, just spend some time in meditation and I'll pray. If you want to lift your hands, if you want to find that quiet place of thankfulness, of God's grace and his mercy. If you want to recall that time when things could have gone terribly wrong, but God stepped in. Or maybe there was a time when things didn't go well and God still showed up. So Father, we come standing here in your presence, standing in your holy presence, Lord. We've received from your word by your spirit and now, Lord God, we reflect and we recall your faithfulness, your healing power, Lord, your comfort in times of sorrow, your comfort in times of loss, whether for ourselves or for others. Lord, your faithfulness over our finances, your faithfulness over our resources, the angels who encamp around about us, the lives you've enabled us to touch, the words that we've shared that have brought life, Lord God. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for directing our paths when we didn't know where to go. We didn't know who to call on but Lord, you are there. You are the God who is there. And so Lord, we lift our hands and we say, thank you, Lord. We bless you in this place. Your presence is here. Lord, your presence is here as we open up our hearts and with our lips, we give you praise. And we thank you for that same sense of gratitude and expectation and excitement, appreciation as this year rolls into 2024. Because you will show up, Lord God. You never fail. And we thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you for the miracles, Lord God. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for open eyes and open ears. And we bless you in this place in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Maybe seated. We're going to dismiss on an offering and go straight back to our brunch. Again, so good to see you out on this morning. Good to see um, just the blessing of God, his favor uh, for our guests on today. You're welcome. Uh, good to see Mother Faria on today. Amen. Amen. Always good to see her. I was praying for Deacon Gibson. Bless you, sir. Appreciate you praying for you. Amen. Amen. You be encouraged, all right? God's with you. You, you, you know, this is going to be a difficult season, but God is faithful in every season. Amen. Those at home watching.